about it. Um, those who come to our prayer services on Tuesday, we pray against um, principalities and powers. We pray against the things of darkness and the things of this world. Amen. And so the thing is, we always look for signs of after we pray, God moving. And we always see the signs of God moving. Like, and those who have been here will testify. We've seen principalities fall. We've seen so many things happen that we give God all the glory and honor and praise. But there was something that the Lord showed me that stood out to me because he already told me he wanted me. Um, I said this last week. He wanted me to do a series of where I reveal the true Jesus as opposed to everyone else. Right. Uh, like Mormonism, Islam and et cetera. Everyone has their own version of Jesus. But the Lord wanted me to specifically break it down. And so I was kind of tug of war. And I was like, because I knew the Lord wanted me to talk about Mormonism, but I didn't know necessarily why. Did you know that after the Tuesday prayer, and we look forward that in Utah, one of the biggest Mormon temples, um, how many of you have seen a Mormon temple? Have you guys seen um, that angel on the top of the temple with a horn? Mm -mm. By the way, that is not Michael. That is not Gabriel. That is another... Um, angel named, um, I hope I said his name properly, although I don't really care, um, is Moroni. And that is the same angel that talked to Joseph Smith um, and revealed to him that he was a prophet and blah, 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 and that he, you know, the Book of Mormon and all that stuff. But something interesting happened. There was an earthquake in Utah and Moroni's horn um, basically it broke off. One of the biggest <laughs> horns, it broke off. If you remember on Tuesday when we prayed, we prayed that demonic strongholds and demonic um, altars will be destroyed in the name of Yeshua. Amen. And shortly after that prayer, like, in it's days, guys. Like, we see the results in days. How many of you know that God moves when the ecclesia and the people come together. The, the Lord said, if any two shall touch and agree, it shall be done by my father in heaven. And right there, when I saw that, I knew God was telling me, yes, you got to talk about Mormonism. That's why, because God is moving and is doing something. And I believe even um, some of you might know this story and some of you uh, might have um, forgotten, but me and um, Sister Susan, we ran into um, a bunch of Mormons. Um, and that the Lord even supernaturally gave me one of the um, names. That was, um, that was pretty cool. So yes, I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, God, because the reason why, part of the reason is that when I go into this teaching of Mormonism, you're going to see some, you're going to see some things. Because even when I read it, I said, you know what, that doesn't sound too bad. In fact, that sounds similar to us. But however, there are very, like they said, the devil is in the details. Say that in the chat, the devil is in the details. When you start looking into the details, it's, you start to see the devil and his influence. You start to see um, how Mormonism is another form of Gnosticism. Yes, I'm going to connect Gnosticism to Mormonism. I'll even connect Mormonism to Islam because it's connected. But again, there's so much information I can get into, but... I'm telling you, this is why this is going to be a two-parter. So this is part one. Come back next week, and I'll uh, dive into part two. So who is ready? Are you guys ready for this? I'm telling you, because I'm really excited. I cannot wait to dive into this, because some of you, um, 
like, do me a favor in the chat. Give me a percentage of what you think you know of Mormonism. So, a hundred percent, I know everything. And on a, or you know, how about this? Um, one to ten. Okay, do me a favor. One to ten. All right, ten meaning very high. Okay. <laughs> That's right. The devil is in the details. Okay, so we got one out of ten. We got a two. Okay. <laughs> Literally one. Okay. One percent even. Okay. So this is going to be fun for a lot of you guys because we are going to talk about things. Um, but first thing we're going to do we're going to dive into the word of God. Amen. So let me show you um, the scripture that we're going to be reading. We're going to start at John 14. Okay. We're going to start at John 14 and I'm going to, um, we're going to start at verse one. Okay. Is everyone there? Holy spirit, give them revelation. Listen to this. So it says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. You know where I am going and you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and that is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you such a long time, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who lives in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, or else believe me on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will do the works that I do also, and he will do greater works than these because I am going to my father. I will do whatever you ask in my name that the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so let's dive into this here. If you have been in the series and you are paying attention in our Bible study, Jesus, the maker of heaven and earth, we clearly show that Jesus, Yeshua, is the God of the Bible. Every, everything was made by him and for him. God the Father honors the Son, and God the Son honors the Father, right? Okay, then. So now let's dive into, well, Mormons, they believe Jesus is the Son of God. What is the problem? Well, there's a few things that's a problem. Number one is that the father in Mormonism is not the same father that we know or that was revealed through Jesus Christ. But Simba, the name of God the Father in Mormonism is Elohim. Just because he has his name does not mean that that is the same God. And you will find this in Gnosticism too. Even when they use our Bible, they'll use the same terms and phrases, but they don't mean the same thing. This is why you have to understand what the words actually mean and what they entail. And that's why you have to study to show thyself approved. Are you understanding this here? Because if you talk to a Mormon and you say, do you believe Elohim? They're like, yes, we believe in Elohim. Elohim is God. Actually, Elohim is an office because Elohim is as in the Hebrew, Bereshit Elohim. It's talking about in the beginning, God, Elohim. Elohim is the name for God, but 
God, as we have been over this, what is a God? It is an office, it is a class, it is a rank, right? So saying that God the Father's name is Elohim doesn't make sense because why is his name in office? That's no different than the Muslims. If you ask them what is Allah's name, they'll say Allah is Allah. Allah is not a name. Allah is a title because Allah only translates to the God. That's all it means. Allah means the God. That is not a name. That is a title. What is the name? Are you understanding this here? And again, I don't want people to think, well, Siba, you're not a Mormon. How do you know these things? Because I studied Mormonism. And also, if you don't want to believe me, how about we go look at Mormon sources, not Christian sources, Mormon sources. So let me tell you a little bit so that you can understand it. Basically, a long time ago, Elohim was born of another god and his celestial wife, okay? In fact, if you ask a Mormon, God the Father was once a man himself. So the God that they serve was a man who became a God. Now, here's a problem with that. Because how was he a man? Because earth wasn't even here yet. So they're saying he was a man on another planet. So basically they're saying God the Father is an alien. Are you hearing this here? So God the Father was once a man. So now the question is, okay, well then who created him? Oh, well that's another God. Oh, so you're saying that there's a bunch of gods and Elohim is just one. What does that sound like to you guys? Polytheism, right? So it's polytheism, but that's actually Gnosticism. Because in Gnosticism, they believe that there are many gods, many celestial beings. Elohim, or the Christian God, is just one of the many gods. And he's actually the lowest because he's evil and blah, blah, blah. That's Gnosticism, okay? And basically this, we're going to talk about the Mormon Elohim. Mormon God the Father, what he did is that he had Jesus in the celestial realm. So Jesus is not God in the beginning. Jesus is a spiritual child of God the Father. Do you see how that's a problem? Do you see that that's not the same Jesus revealed in the Bible? That's not the same Jesus that's the ruler of heaven and earth, God, the son, the one who existed before all of creation. In fact, who's ready for some Mormon sources? I'm not making this up. Let's see. Oh, let's hear about God the Father. Okay? You guys ready? God the Father. And this is from Church of Jesus Christ. Dot org. Oh, and by the way, he's a white man. <laughs> God the Father was a white man. Hmm, isn't that funny? I'm going to explain all of this later. Trust me. Oh, this story gets crazier. And believe me, I'm not here to bash Mormons. I'm not here to do anything. I'm here to reveal the truth of Jesus Christ. That's it. 
this is wrong because here's another thing. I just want to say this. So basically what they say is the Book of Mormon is equal to the Bible. It is God's word. The Book of Mormon is just like it. But however, if it is God's word, then that means they shouldn't conflict with one another, right? If it's God's word, it should be consistent. So if I show the inconsistency in the Book of Mormon and in the Bible, and we know that the Bible is God's word, we don't know about this Book of Mormon, I'll show you that the Book of Mormon cannot be God's word. But let me show you. Let's let's learn about our Heavenly Father, shall we? God the Father. God the Father is the supreme being in whom we believe, whom we worship, and to whom we pray. He is the ultimate creator, ruler, and preserver of all things. He is perfect, has all power, and knows all things. He has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's. Why? Because he was a man. But that is not the God that is revealed in the book of Revelation. This is not God the Father that is revealed in the scriptures. Okay? Let's continue. One of life's greatest question, who am I? A beloved primary song helps even little children answers. We sing, I am a child of God, and he has sent me here. The knowledge that we are children of God provides strength, comfort, and hope. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Let's, let's go a little bit further. Oh, the plan of salvation. Our Father wants us to dwell with him eternally. His work in glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. In order to make this possible, he prepared the plan of salvation. He sent his beloved son, Jesus Christ, to loose the bands of death and atone for the sins of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This sacrifice is the greatest expression of our father's love for us. Now, reading that, that sounds pretty Christian, doesn't it? It sounds like us, doesn't it? Remember what I said, the devil is in the detail. The devil is in the detail. What is the plan of salvation? Are you guys ready for this one? I don't think you guys are ready for this. Oh, thank God. It showed it. All right. Check this out. By the way, watch this. Here's the plan of salvation. Before we were on earth, we lived with our heavenly parents as their spiritual children. Hold on. Did you guys see that? No. So before... We came to the earth, we existed as spiritual children. We pre-existed before we came here. We were spiritual children like Jesus. And guess what? Money. And yes, parents, you heard that right. Parents, they have a mother in Mormonism, but they don't worship her. And I'll prove that in a minute. Money, guess what? Before we came to the earth, we were white. <laughs> Look at this. What do you see in common with all the people who pre-existed? Before we existed, we were white. But here's the plan of salvation. Oh, this sounds just wonderful. No, I'm serious. This is what they believe. And wait till you find out why we became black. Wait until you find out. Before we were born on earth, we lived with our heavenly parents as their spirit children. 
at a council with all of his children, Heavenly Father presented a plan known as the plan of salvation or the great plan of happiness. The plan includes all the laws and ordinances of the gospel necessary to gain eternal life, the greatest of all the gifts of God. Sadly, one third of Heavenly Father's spirit children did not accept the plan. They chose to follow Lucifer, who became the devil and were cast out of the presence of God. We are on earth because we chose. Wait a minute. Did you see that? We chose to be here. We just forgot. We chose this. But wait, it gets better. We chose to follow Heavenly Father's plan. What significant purpose of mortality is to gain a physical body. On earth, we can have joy and peace. Wait a minute. If we were spirit children, wouldn't we already have that? This doesn't make sense. On earth, we can have joy and peace, but we will also face temptation, opposition, and adversity and experience trials. Earthly trials are part of mortality. It can help us grow to be more like our Heavenly Father. Okay. So these guys, basically, they glossed over a lot of information, but it's okay because the devil's in the details. So who's ready for the story, according to Mormonism, how we got here and why we got here? So again, Elohim and our Heavenly Mother, and in case you guys think I'm lying about our Heavenly Mother, which again is a Gnostic teaching as well. Um, Here you go just in case y'all don't believe me, mother in heaven from their own source teaches that all human beings are beloved spirit children of heavenly parents, a heavenly father, and a heavenly mother. Okay. And there is no record of a formal revelation on this doctrine. Some women that Joseph Smith tutor said there was yeah, there's a mother, blah, 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 whatever. But y'all see that, right? That's actually a Gnostic teaching. So Mormons have more in common with Gnosticism than they do with Christianity. I'm just going to tell you the truth. But anyway, time for the story. So basically what happened, like they said, there was a meeting Elohim, God the Father, he wanted all of us, his spirit children, who were white, he wanted us to become God like he was. He wanted us to have a chance to become God like he was, because he was a man who became God he said, it's only fair if I give you guys the opportunity. But he didn't really have a plan. So what happened was Jesus, our big brother, our firstborn, the eldest son of Elohim. Hmm. Just do me a favor. Does it sound like Joseph Smith really understood what the Bible means by firstborn? <laughs> Actually, no, you didn't choose to be black. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. So what happened was Jesus came up with a plan and said, hey, hey, dad, why don't you send us down to earth, give us mortal bodies. And what I'll do is I'll come on the earth. I'll die for everyone's sin. And then everyone can choose to follow me, follow the pathway. I'll atone for their sin. And then what happens is if they follow the book of 
if they follow all the rules and the rituals and stuff like that, they can become God just like you are. And we'll give them free will. They get to choose. But we're going to wipe their memory. They'll have no recollection to this. They'll have no recollection of their life before. And guess what? We all said, no, excuse me. A few of us said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Way to go, big brother Jesus. That sounds like an excellent idea. Give us a chance to either return back or to be eternally damned in hell. Oh, I am ready to convert to Mormonism right now. That sounds like such a wonderful idea. But oh, our other brother, Lucifer, steps in and says, wait a minute. Now, you're going to see that Lucifer tries to make himself the hero in this story. Or common theme of Lucifer, he's misunderstood. He, he wasn't given a fair whatever, okay? It's all lies, okay? He's sadistic. He, he is evil to the bone, okay? I'm just going to tell you all that right now. He is the fallen one, and he's still fallen. So what happened was Lucifer came up with an idea. He said, instead of the possibility of losing anybody, let's just take away their free will and command them to follow your ways and this, that, and et cetera, so that they can come back home and ascend Godhood and none of them have to go to hell. Isn't it funny that Lucifer sounds like the hero in this story? That sounds pretty good to say, okay, because apparently Lucifer loved his siblings so much, he did not want to lose any of us. So he said, no, let's just take away their free will and command them to follow that way, none of them have to go to hell or be lost. And God the Father basically said no. He decided to go with Jesus' plan. And then Lucifer, like a spoiled child, got angry. And he became Satan. And he convinced a third of our brothers and sisters to rebel and they lost, and so they were sent to earth, but they didn't have mortal bodies. So now they're just spirits, they're demons. They're, they're, they're demons, they're, they're evil spirits. Those are the ones who sided with Lucifer in the rebellion. Monty, are you paying attention? Cause the ones who were sent and got black skin was because we were mutual. We were neutral in the war in heaven. We didn't pick a side. We didn't pick God the Father, nor did we pick Lucifer. So when we came to earth, we became black because we were neutral. We didn't pick a side. Monty, it's our punishment. We're black because it was our punishment. We chose to go against, we didn't pick God the Father, nor did we pick Lucifer's. So when we came to the earth, we got black skin. But those who sided with Jesus and agreed to the plan, guess what? When they were born, they would be born white to represent um, what they looked like before they were pre-existed. 
Who's ready to convert? Are you seeing this here? Now, again, I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to poop all over. No, that's really not. I'm saying, really think about this. This is ridiculous. This is not the God of the Bible. This is not, first off, hell wasn't even created for us. The Bible says, oh, you asked what about brown? Eh, white and black mixed. That's all I can tell you. Oh, and apparently the Indians are the Israelites. So guess what, black Hebrew Israelites? Some of your teaching is from a white man. Congratulations. Because they teach the same thing. But isn't it funny how in one religion, because black and white, but when we go back to heaven, we become white again. In fact, I'll prove it to you. Even in Islam, this is taught. In fact, watch this. So for all those who are like, Islam is black power and all that stuff, um, explain this. Um, Hadith 119, uh, read this. This is from sunnah.com. This isn't a Christian source. It says, Abu Darda reported God's messenger as saying, God created Adam when he created him and struck his right shoulder and brought forth his offspring white like small ants. And he struck his left shoulder and brought forth his offspring black as though they were charcoal. Then he said to the party on his right side, now who are the ones on his right side? The white. What does he say? To paradise and I do not care. And he said to the party in his left shoulder, the black offspring, to hell and I do not care. This is Hadith 119. And it's right there. So what was that? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Mormons can lie for the... Oh, no, not Mormons. Muslims can lie for the good of Islam. So it's right there. The offspring white. He said to paradise and I do not care. So Allah doesn't care. I do not care. Meaning it's not about being just. It's just because he likes white people. In fact, did you know that in the Quran, it's illegal to call Muhammad black? In fact, in the Quran, he's actually portrayed as a white man. They actually call him white man. Oh, but this is my favorite part. Then he said to the party left shoulder to hell and I do not care. So basically, if you're black, you're going to hell. Black is seen as a punishment. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I know some of you are probably wondering, Simba, what does this have to do with us? Because here's another thing. Jesus being born in Mormonism, Elohim, God the Father, impregnated the Virgin Mary, according to Mormon sources so that Yeshua, Jesus, could have a physical body. Let me ask you a question. How is she a virgin if God the Father had to impregnate her? You'll see that the Holy Spirit has no part to play in this, not that much at all. Because we know that 
the reason she is the Virgin Mary, number one, she wasn't known by men. It's a supernatural birth because what is born of her is from the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Are you all learning something? Now, the birth of Jesus Christ happened this way. After his mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, before they could, she was found with child by the Holy Spirit, not by the father. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, had a mind to divorce her privately. But while he thought on these things, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for he who is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. It is not of God the Father. It is not, no. So that right there, the story's out. Luke chapter 10, verses 22 and 23. Use this to refute Mormonism, please. These are scriptures that are used to refute Mormonism because they say the Book of Mormon and the Bible are the same, and they are not. Luke chapter 10, 22, 23, it says, all things have been handed over to me by my father. And no one knows who the son is but the father and who the father is but the son and he to whom the son desires to reveal him. Then he returned to his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see what you see. So that's in Luke chapter 10, 22, 23. Matthew 11, 27 to 28. All things are delivered to me by my father. And no one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son. And he to whom the son will reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor in our heavenly burden, and I will give you rest. Okay. And as you know, Hebrews chapter one is my favorite concerning God the father and God the son's relationship. But listen to me. Why am I showing you these verses? It's because I want to show you something in the Book of Mormon. Okay? We're going to read the Book of Mormon. Are you guys ready for this? I know. I'm almost done. I promise. Let's go to... And yes, these books are not in the Bible. These are Book of Mormon, Messiah. Let's check this out. No, 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 no. It's 15. My bad. Watch this. Messiah 15. Watch this. How Christ is both the Father and the Son. He will make intercession and bear the transgressions of his people they and all the holy prophets are his seed. He brings to pass the resurrection. Little children have eternal life. Okay. And now Abinadi said unto them, I would that ye should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men and shall redeem his people. And because he dwelleth in flesh, he shall be called the son of God. That is not why Jesus is called the son of God. Do you understand that? They're literally saying because he came in flesh, that's why he's called the son of God. No, that's why he's called son of man. He holds the office of son. He is the son. Son meaning he is the inheritor or heir. That's why the scripture says we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. And having subjected the flesh to the will of the father, being the father and the son. The father because he was conceived by the power of God and the son because of the flesh, thus becoming the father and son. And they are one God, yea, the very eternal father of heaven and earth. Do you guys see that? So in the Book of Mormon, it just says that Jesus is the father. Which is it? Is it that God, the Father and God, the Son? Or is Jesus the Father and the Son? Do you understand how that can be a problem? And another, I'm not going to read because of time, but another one, they say, 
Jesus is God the Father. He is also the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. What? But yet in the Bible, there is clearly a what? A distinction. We just read it in Luke chapter 10 and Matthew 11. He's saying what? I don't do anything unless my father has told me or has given me the authority to. It is him and the father that preexisted all of creation. So here it is. Please tell me you are understanding this. This is why this is not the same Jesus. This is not Yeshua. Because I don't even think, yeah, they believe Yeshua's God, I think. But more so, he's God the Son. He was created. We have a heavenly mother. We have heavenly parents. And you have to do a lot of rituals. And some of them are occultic. In the Mormon church, you have to do deeds. You have to do good things. You have to do all this stuff in hopes that you will attain godhood. In fact, if you are married, one of the hopes of the Mormon church is that you will be eternally married so that when you die, you and your wife will achieve godhood and you'll be like Elohim. You'll rule your own planet and you'll have multiple spirit children and you'll rule over them. And also you can have multiple wives, of course, because why? God... God the Father has multiple wives. We want to be like him. But yet, Yeshua didn't teach polygamy, did he? No. He said that, in fact, it's in the beginning of the Bible that he planned what? For man to be with one man to be with one woman. Why am I going into this? Listen to me. If you don't understand anything else, this is why you have to study. This is not the Jesus revealed of the Bible. They can put the name of Jesus. They can put the name of anything, but it is not the same person. Do you understand this here? I don't know how they're going to explain that Jesus was a Jew, so I don't know how he's white. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. And I'll get into more into this next week. I believe I'm done. But please, especially in this last hour, do not be deceived. Yes, Mormons are very nice people. I've met some Mormons. They are very nice people. But they are deceived by a demonic spirit. They are deceived by Gnosticism. They are deceived. In fact, it's kind of funny that the angel revealed this, hmm, named Moroni or Moroni. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Because didn't Yeshua said, don't even believe doctrines given by what? Angels? Let's see. Zoroastrianism, an angel comes to the founder. Islam, an angel comes to the founder. Mormon, an angel comes to the founder. Anybody seeing a pattern here? And by the way, the angels tell them the same thing. Oh, the church is corrupt. You're a prophet. You're going to be used to basically reveal the truth, whatever. But there's only one truth. Yeshua is Lord. Yeshua is the son of God. I did not pre-exist. I did not choose to be here. I don't care what you said. 
My job is to get back to my heavenly father. My job is, I, why the heck? This is the part I don't get. I've been to heaven. I have, there's one cool death experience. This person was raised from the dead and they literally said, what are you doing? I was with Jesus. I want to go back. And it was so. They, the person went back and they went back to heaven. Listen to me. This right here is wrong. Because it's through efforts and works that you get back. It's through doing all these things. It's through wearing um, ritual underwear. And I am not kidding. Mormon, you have to wear a special underwear, a sacred underwear. Otherwise, you cannot get to be a god or whatever. It, it, it's, it's one of the no-nos. So anyway, you see how the devil puts all these hoops and loops it's through your works, through you earned godhood. You earned salvation. Yeah, Jesus paid it all, but you know what? You still got to work to get that. Yet the God of the Bible says to me, all you need to do is have a relationship with me. All you need to do is allow me to work through you. I feel the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is submit yourself to me, to my will, and I'll change everything. I'll use you to change the world. Are you hearing this here?